Okay, I think we're live. We're in a TV studio and we're live. So welcome to the Bluefin Solutions webinar entitled, it's a bit of a mouthful, the SAP Fiori Launchpad as a human-centric dashboard. I'm reading it off the screen here. I've typed it so many times I should know it off by heart by now. Okay, so I'm DJ and I'm going to introduce you shortly to my colleagues John and Ollie here. Uh, like I say, we're in TV studio. It's very exciting. It's quite scary as well. So this is a first. We've got a few things we're going to try for the first time. We've also got a few issues with uh, streaming. It might be a bit juddery uh, every, every so often, but that's, that's, uh, that's just the way it goes today. Um, I've got an earpiece, so I feel like uh, I'm guarding the president. We've also got microphones and everything, and there's TV cameras everywhere. You wouldn't believe it's amazing. We've got a green screen behind us. Well, it's not green. It's got my slides on. So let's get started. So um, what we're going to talk about is the Fury Launchpad. In particular, the use of the Fury Launchpad as a dashboard, as a dashboard for KPIs and stuff like that. So let me just take you through the agenda um, that's going to take us through this lunch hour here in the UK, at least. Um, I'm going to introduce Ollie and John shortly. Then John is going to give us like a 30,000 feet overview of, of the Launchpad itself and the tiles and so on, just so we're all talking the same language. We all understand what we're talking about when we move down to the next level with Ollie, who's going to take us on a tour of uh, typical use cases for tiles and so on. So just go from 30,000 feet down to 10,000 feet and have a look at a bit more detail. Once we've done that, we can start to really think about um, scope beyond the standard uh, Fiori Launchpad use cases, which are you know access to tiles, uh, sorry, access to applications via tiles and so on, and really start to think about the sorts of things that you could do beyond that with KPIs, with, with dynamic data, with small uh, micro charts and so on. Um, so we're going to look at how to do that, uh, or more specifically, how to get data. Um, where to get data from and how to surface it in those tiles. After that, if we've got a bit of time, we'll have a bit of a chat between us about you know, how to get started with the dashboard strategy, you know, um, what, 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 what things you can do. And then during this webinar, there's a feature on our GoToMeeting thing that allows you to submit questions. So please feel free to submit questions and we'll be free, feel free to uh, ignore them. No, I'm just kidding, to uh, answer them if we can, if we've got time. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce you to uh, John and Ollie. I'm guessing that you may know these guys already. So Ollie's been around with Bluefin for, uh, for five, six years now. Um, all things technical, that's his own words, but I would also agree with that. Uh, he's always experimenting, experimenting with the latest technology. Uh, he's worked on multiple imp implementations of SAP Fiori and builds tons of apps with uh, SAP's UI5 toolkit. So that's Ollie on my far right or left. I'm really confused with mirrors and TV screens and everything, but that's quite cool. Um, so we've got John Murray as well next to me. Um, an amazing developer, just like Ollie, and he's always trying to keep on the leading edge of technology. Um, he specializes in mobile and HANA, if you're from the US, or HANA, if you speak normally, um, and uh, also builds a ton of stuff with uh, Fury and UI5 as well. And you've got me, a mainframe dinosaur, who's hanging on in there with his, uh, with his teeth. Uh, I'm still waiting for the 370 assembler and uh, punch card revolution to, uh, to reoccur. But anyway, until that happens, I'm hacking around with the HANA Cloud Platform and UI5 and Fury. By the way, we're all very proudly wearing our SAP UI5, Open UI5 and SAP UI5 t-shirts because don't forget that everything you're going to see here is built upon UI5 as an amazing foundation. So UI5, awesome. OK, so um, let's have a quick look. We've already uh, published a few blog posts before this webinar. Um, one from uh, William Good about the different types of uh, tiles on the launch pad, one from Tiago. Woo! Tammy, you're on screen right now. Amazing. You're live. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so, yeah, so we had Tiago uh, talking about using the Fury uh, launch pad as a real time financial feed mechanism with a moving graph. Ollie's laughing his head off. It's amazing. We are, it's, it's so exciting. We're live. And I wrote some, uh, something about using the, the way I use the launch pad for my running stats, for my running KPIs. So uh, very human centric there. So anyway, um, let me just contextualize this before we get into the, uh, into the detail and descend down to, uh, down to the ground. So this tile, uh, sorry, this screenshot is almost 
uh, illegal not to show when you're talking about, uh, oh, I need to turn this tweet. Oh, no, keep tweeting. I just keep tw tweeting is really good. Keep tweeting. But no swearing. Um, you see this, this picture of the launch pad, the, the screenshot of the launch pad everywhere. And if you're like me, you think, those tiles look really, really cool. It's not just tiles to access applications. It's, it's stuff that you can actually see and act upon. It's like a green number there. Uh, we, um, we, OK, yep, um, it's, there's a green number there, and we can, we can act on that. There's a KPI. We've got graphs. Um, uh, we've got graphs that we can look at and have a, at a glance uh, idea of what's going on in my organization or my running, for example. And you know, it's like, how do we do this? And what other sorts of things can we do with the technology that's, that's driving this? So that's, the, that's the, um, uh, the context. Hopefully, that's the context that you're expecting. So without further ado, let me hand over first of all, to John. And I've got John's slide, so I'm going to go away from this one, and I'm going to drive while John uh, talks us through. So over to you, John. Brilliant. Thank you very much, DJ, and thank you for that introduction as well. So as DJ said, I'll be covering off the uh, what, an overview of the Fiori Launchpad, so a quick history and uh, features of it. So next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so contents-wise for this my bit, so a quick, quick history uh, followed by uh, a list of the features, uh, how the uh, launch pad is organised, then some quick examples uh, followed by how responsive design fits into the equation, and then the deployment options that you've got for actually getting this up and running in your, in your organisation. So uh, first off the bat, we've got the history. So uh, SAP defines the Fiori Launchpad as the SAP Fiori Launchpad is a role-based, personalised UI client that enables users to access SAP Fiori apps side by side with established UIs. So what does that actually mean? Um, simply, it means that you can view your Fiori applications on a personalized website on any device, that has a web browser, and all with a consistent user experience. So where did the launch pad that we see today come from? It started back in 2013, almost three years ago to the month, uh, in the form of the SAP Fiori launch page, uh, which contained a small number of core Fiori applications and that brought about responsive design and the ability to view it on devices of all sizes and the beginnings of the t also the beginnings of the tile concept, which is still in use today. It, it finally had a fairly limited number of deployment options and also a fairly small number of applications too. Mm. Uh, however, good start. Good start. Uh, <laughs> good start. Could do better. A for effort. Um, shortly after this, we moved on to uh, Fiori 1.0, which was an incremental update on the launch page, which continued uh, the sort of the UI, the theme of the tiles and the responsive design, and it improved the number of applications and just sort of generally improved it a bit. Then after that, not long after that though, in November 2013, we had uh, the Fiori launch pad was released, which brought with it um, quite a significant update, and that came with a similar UI, but a much more polished looking thing and refinements to all of that good stuff. And also, more important, most importantly, it increased the uh, number of standard applications from 25 to just under 200, which is a really good thing. Uh, so the key features of the, the launch pad are personalization. So in this day and age, everyone expects to be able to adjust the, the tools that they use to their own, um, to meet their own needs. So the launch pad lets users do just that, and they've got the option to build their own home pages full of all the content they need, which saves them time and increases productivity. It's also context aware, which means that it, it analyzes the state that it's currently in, and it also suggests to you, the user, uh, any relevant actions that would, would be of use to you, which is, of course, a great, great benefit. It's, it's fully customizable uh, via the theming and branding uh, toolkit. Which, doesn't, which we'll see later on, doesn't actually need any programming experience for that either, which is great. So it means you can make mm. it fit your, uh, your company's branding really, really easily. And uh, tile-wise, as you saw on one of DJ's screenshots earlier, it uses tiles as a, a way to organize the content. So there's three primary tile types, which I'll, uh, you can see there, but I'll go over the, those more in a bit. And content type, oh, sorry, what you can actually fit in content-wise. So we've got the tiles, what can you put in them? Um, it supports all sorts, really. You can, uh, you've got all the standard Fiori applications, all 200 of them, uh, bespoke UI5 applications, and you can also do DimPro, App App, uh, SAP Web GUI, and also SAP Screen Personas, as well as uh, plugging in Lamira reports and SAP Jam feeds, so quite a lot of options there. And of course, as I meant, mobile design's been really at the forefront for this, so it uses HTML5, which means it works on anything with a web browser, 
and it will size itself perfectly. Cool. I noticed you're also talking about tiles on tiles there, very meta jump. <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> Going around in circles. Um, yes, so how's that organised? Well, first off, authentication, which I think is the a key thing for most, or, most organisations, is also how, how it's authenticated. Um, so it works across um, m m all backend systems, really. And it uses a role-based authentication system, uh, which is easily configured and ensures that each user only has access to the relevant applications that are required for their daily work. Uh, the role system also allows for um, easily configurable default applications and layouts to ease the initial transition into the launchpad. So often the customization stuff by the, by the user isn't actually even necessary because the standard thing will be more than enough for them. Put the options there if they want it. Uh, next slide, please. So then tile groups. So rather than just flinging a load of tiles at your screen, um, you can organize those tiles into groups, which, are, which obviously makes things a lot easier to navigate and understand. So much like your desktop, uh, the launch pad is a, set, is a collection of, of things which are important to you. And the tile groups mean that you can categorize those into nice, simple, uh, relevant groups, and also it keeps it nice and easily scalable for uh, if you were to view it on a phone, say, instead of a computer. Uh, the groups are fully customizable, and you can also put any tile in as many groups as you want if, it, if you feel it fits into multiple categories. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, yep, so then, so behind that, behind that home page, you've got the tile catalog. So this screen isn't personalized, isn't, per, isn't customizable. Um, and it contains every single application that you uh, or your user has access to. So that might include a lot of stuff that you don't actually necessarily need. So in here, you can look at what you want and then simply add it with a little one button click to your home screen. And that allows you to build up a nice uh, streamlined home screen for yourself. I think, I think it's also fair to say that you know, it's not just applications that these tiles oh, no, give no. access to. So you could have a you could have a, a catalog of KPIs, for example. Yeah, absolutely, which you yes. Come on to right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, some examples of those in the bit. Yeah. But yeah, it's, sorry. Yeah, probably should have said that. Yeah, it's not just application uh, shortcuts. It's the app. The app. They don't have to be shortcuts to anything. They can just be charts and, as DJ says, KPIs. Uh, so that's yeah, perfect. So let's have a quick look at some examples. So as you can see here. Uh, at the top there, we've got some, uh, some nice, simple application, application launching tiles, which Ollie will cover off more in a bit. And then underneath that, we've got a, a feed, which can, doesn't actually do anything other than show you sort of relevant information, and it'll cycle through that. And then after that, we've got, uh, as you can, <laughs> what he just mentioned there, we've got a nice KPI tile, which shows you a chart of fairly concise information, which means that you don't actually necessarily need to even drill into the application. You can just see it at a high level. And likewise, at the bottom there, we've got more, uh, slightly more complicated chart, but that tile shows how just how sort of to what levels you can customize the launch pad. As you can see, that's really looks a lot different to the what most people yeah. would consider the launch pad. So these these tiles at the bottom, the three tiles, two by two tiles, which which mm. Ollie's going to talk about a little bit later. But these were built by uh, one of our colleagues, Tiago, for example. Mm. And these are standard Fury launch pad tiles, just themed differently and um, built awesomely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, and then, as I mentioned earlier, it's also fully customizable with the theme designer. So this is actually it here. So you can just adjust all the colors <coughs> and everything else about it, logos, branding, whatever. And it doesn't need any programming, none of that. Just use this tool and away you go. <laughs> none of that rubbish. Yeah, not, none of that stuff. <laughs> Who wants to do that? Um, <laughs> So yeah, and yeah, you can also uh, export stuff from there, so you can transfer it across to multiple systems without any sort of tedious copying and pasting or anything, that, anything like that, which is really cool and streamlined. Uh, next up, we've got so yep yeah, to demonstrate the responsive design. Um, as you can see on the right, we've got uh, a the my launchpad on my my laptop screen, which is quite large, and then to the left of that, you've got it on my iPad, and then finally on the left of that, you've got it on my phone. As you can see, it shows the same information and it remains consistent throughout, and yet it, it's resized itself to sort of fit the necessary mm -hmm. screen sizes, which I think is a key or great thing that's happened in now, because in the, past you, yeah, in the past you were limited to, say, using just a computer, but not anymore. Um, uh, finally, so deployment options. So how do you get this up and running for yourself? So first option is the ABAP front-end server, which supports all the applications, and it also supports all the UI tech, which is 
uh, SAP UI5, DIM per ab app, SAP GUI for HTML, screen personas, and all the different types of reports, so Bex Design Studio and all that lot, uh, and also URL navigation. It doesn't support iView, however, and it does, does though, support all SSO options, which is great if you're in IT. And it, it's deployed on ABAP, and it can be deployed either on-premise or via HANA Enterprise Cloud. So next slide. And then we've got the uh, SAP Enterprise Portal, which uh, supports a substantially reduced subset of applications. But it does support all the UI technology, which means you could add in bespoke applications easily enough. And it also supports all the SSO options as well. Again, much like the ABAP front end server, that runs on ABAP and again is deployed either on premise or via HANA Enterprise Cloud, which is great. And then finally, we've got the HANA Cloud platform, which is all shiny, new, and modern. Um, and this one supports all the applications and all the uh, UI technology as well, but it doesn't support iView, which, uh, much like the ABAP front end server, it also doesn't support all the SSO options. Uh, it, doesn't, it does all of them apart from SAP logon tickets. Uh, it's deployed on Java rather than ABAP, and it can be deployed on the cloud only. There are no on-premise options. Um, one, yep. Clu closing the word cloud there, I guess. Closing the word cloud, absolutely. <laughs> on-premise cloud. Um, <laughs> everyone's favorite. Uh, one, <laughs> one, one, one new option for the cloud deployment is the uh, SAP Fiori Cloud Edition, which comes with a limited number of SAP Fiori apps, uh, which cross sort of the most commonly used apps and use cases. And it also comes with the ability to uh, make your own apps and customize those. So it's sort of a really good way to test your, put your feet in the waters of Fiori. And it all, and theming and branding support. So yeah, Fiori Cloud option. Awesome. Great stuff. Awesome. Uh, yep, so I'll, that's me done. So I'll hand over to Ollie now, who'll uh, go through his stuff. So can we switch, switch, switch <laughs> the switch screen, screen, screen to Ollie, please? <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Ollie. Um, I'm going to take you through a typical um, a tour of the typical use cases for tiles in, in the launch pad. Uh, that's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> another mouthful. Another mouthful. Uh, and I think the best place to start is just with a static, um, uh, what's called a static tile. And this is it may be something you, you're used to in the traditional uh, launch pad sense. Maybe you have uh, my timesheets or, or some sort of leave approval. Um, already installed, and you get something like this. And, and all it is is a navigation to something else. Y you're assigned, if, if you're, you're capable of, of having these applications, that they're assigned to you by, author by roles and authorizations, uh, and they appear for the user to, to action. Nothing, nothing more complicated than that. Nice and simple. Um, if you want to move on, on from that, um, here is a <coughs> SAP S4 HANA system, um, slightly more complex that we've, I'm, I'm assigned in our demo system as a GL accountant. Uh, how little do they know? <laughs> <laughs> how little do you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, each of these is a navigational uh, intent to, to a, something that that person can do. So um, I can display a GL account balances, I can uh, um, Managed depreciation runs, etc., um, and, and that's they're assigned to me because I'm noted in the system as a uh, GL accountant, so I get all of these peers. So they're assigned to you explicitly, and also because of the authorizations and the, and the role concept, right? Yeah. So you, you get what you need to do your daily job, right? Yeah. Um, and as a user, I can actually, um, or as an admin, I can actually reorder these things into the into the process flow, yeah. um, I can I can hide or or, or, or remove these, um, and just to make my life a, yeah. a, a lot easier. We're also seeing um, some of the theming capabilities of the Launchpad uh, here as well. So we, we've replaced the SAP logo with the Bluefin logo, shamelessly, <laughs> uh, and and the background is our, our wonderful little strands device. Um, I can scroll up, you can see. Um, so moving on, on from this, because I think this is, this is quite, um, quite a basic view, um, we actually get uh, something that you, you may also be familiar with uh, if you have something like um, the SAP Fiori My Timesheet application or um, anything like the leave request and um, uh, an approval. Um, and, and they get bundled with uh, a tile 
with a, uh, a dynamic counter. So it's saying I actually haven't filled in my timesheet for the last two days. Um, and uh, you can actually create your own, as DJ is going to sh show you later. Um, uh, this one is saying that I have 28 days holiday remaining. You uh, need to take some holiday. I, I, I think I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've been pretty good with my expenses, and I've submitted all the receipts, so there's nothing, there's nothing uh, uh, unpaid there. Um, and you can see a slightly different, it's a slightly newer version of the launch pad, so I can get a slightly different concept of navigating between the, between the groups. But I guess the key thing here that is that um, that holiday tile, 28 days, there's, there's no necessary action behind that tile, like there is an action behind lots of other tiles. It's just there as a KPI to, for you to look at, right? And yeah, uh, for me to talk to my, uh, my DM and project manager at the time and just to, to, to kick me into some yeah, sort of action exactly. of actually yeah. going and booking some holiday, uh, which is probably what I should do. <laughs> Straight after this. <laughs> um, so so moving, moving on from this, we can actually have a... Um, back to my little, little custom launch pad, um, we can actually have experiment with different sizes of, uh, of tile. Um, you can see the, in group two here, my app three is a, is a dynamic tile um, with, a, with a number and a, 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 a currency bought through from, um, from, from somewhere. Um, uh, and you, you may have also seen this sort of size tile um, in your systems. You may have configured the, the news tile or the, or the feed tile. Um, mm. We so that's a, that's a two by two tile, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so th this one at the bottom is a one by two, and this one at the top is a is a, a two by two, yep. um, two by two tile. So a jumbo tile, um, and it, it's quite good for for what we're going to show in a second, which is uh, actually you could reuse this, uh, use this size, and um, and, and embed a, a a graph or or a chart. So those those are two by two as well, right? Yeah, so these, these are just two by two tiles. We've we themed it so that the the, um, the background is black, so that it makes the yeah. the chart stand out and pop. Um, uh, but this is a, it's nothing more than a, than a, another launch pad, and the data is uh, brought through dynamically from a a, a service somewhere. So the, the screenshot of the classic Fury launch pad, the SAP screenshot that we saw before, all those tiles. Okay, there's a news tile, a one by two news tile, but the other micro charts were sort of very small on a single tile, which, which works beautifully mm -hmm. in some cases, but in other cases, like here, I'm going to point to the screen, our green screen, it's amazing. <laughs> I can't see what I'm pointing at. How fantastic is that? Um, you can actually have huge tiles to, to fit on more data, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the, the, the larger tiles are, are, are nicer because you can actually show, uh, in, in this case, we, we, we've got like our top 10 yeah. Uh, stores that w w I'm perhaps looking after ch a ch chain of stores, um, and you can you can see a lot more information than than you can on, yeah. on, on that smaller tile. But it um, doesn't have to be all two by two, right? No. So I can actually go into the catalog here um, and drag in some some tr more traditional tiles. I can perhaps have a donut or uh, drag in the view pending sales order, which is a dynamic tile, uh, or customer view, which is the the regular static tile, and then come back, and then these these then behave as as they uh, as they do on yeah. a, on, a, on a regular launch pad. I can move them around. Awesome. And trials of a live demo. The uh, <laughs> and our, our tile is broken. <laughs> That's all right. It shows it's real. <laughs> okay. So that brings us down from thirty thousand feet down through 10,000 feet, we sort of had, a, had an idea of the sorts of things that we can have on tiles, right? Um, so what can we source for, for, for data on tiles? Um, so I'm going to take us through now um, presentation and data sources, you know, make, making those tiles work for you and your organization and, 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 and the people in their different departments that would benefit from, you know, having, you know, stuff visible on the desktop, on the tablet, or even you know in their pocket, right on the phone. So, if we can switch back to my screen, please, um, I'm going to show uh, the audience just a few examples of tiles that we've already seen. But what we're going to do is look behind the scenes to see where that data comes from and see how straight, relatively straightforward it is to to surface that data 
um, into the tiles, right? So um, the first example, well, actually, the first example is a static tile, right, up here, but there's nothing to see. There's no, there's no data at all being surfaced there. It's just absolutely static um, and uh, hard-coded values, effectively. Uh, hard-coded modulo internationalization, of course, but hard-coded values. So we're going to move straight on to the first of three examples of dynamic tiles. So we're going to talk about these two first. Um, just for the hell of it, I've decided to use for these two particular tiles an external data source. Now, some of you out there may be familiar already with the, with the Northwind uh, OData service. So it's a public OData service that's actually uh, um, served from the uh, OData, uh, the people who look after the OData standard, and it's a sample data set. So what does that, let's have a look at what the sample Northwind uh, data set looks like, first of all. I just happen to have um, uh, a tab open here with a view of the product's so-called entity set. So for those not familiar with OData, entity set is a, is, a, is, a, is a concept which basically means a list of things. Okay, so we've got here a list of products. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and it's going to go past your screen very, very fast. Uh, we want the count of that product. Uh, we want the count of that product in our tile. We want 77. So what do we need to do? Actually, we need to just leverage, using as a verb, just because I can and I'm on television, um, we need to leverage the dollar count feature of OData to say, don't show me the entities, just tell me how many there are. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see it's 77 there. So that particular resource is a scalar resource and the value is 77. And that 77 is surfaced in that tile there. Now, how does it actually work? So first of all, I've got um, a few slides. Um, John used up almost our entire quota of slides allowed for one webinar. So I've only got four slides. Um, but hopefully that, that, uh, the four slides will, uh, will allow us to, 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 to go through this. So let me just bring up this diagram. So there's our tile on the right-hand side with 77. And that tile is defined in our Fury Launchpad. I'm using uh, a Fury Launchpad on the HANA Cloud platform, particularly via the HANA Cloud portal, which is an awesome service. And you know, I'm using our Bluefin Solutions one, but you can also get a trial account, which is free. Um, so there's no reason for you not to do this as well. And you define, I've defined this tile as a dynamic tile. And when you define a dynamic tile, it gives you the possibility to specify a resource, a URL, for um, the service, as in where am I going to drag this information from on a regular basis or just on a single count? And the regular basis interval here is specified at this refresh interval thing. So as you can see, we've got what we recognize, part recognized from the URL. We've got Northwind v3, Northwind.service, products, dollar count, which is what we just saw. Okay. Um, maybe we'll do a follow up as to a little bit more detail on how this URL is constructed, but very briefly, down at the bottom there, you can see the URL printed out. Printed out? <laughs> Old fashioned. You can see the URL displayed there. And we've got SAP Fury, which is the, the Launchpad Fury or the HCP Fury proxy, pointing to destinations in orange, which is actually an app that's, uh, that I defined in the Web IDE and pushed and deployed to the HANA Cloud platform. That app, we'll have a brief look at that app shortly, that app doesn't have, have any stuff in it. All it has is a neoapp.json file, which is a mapping between a destination definition, a relative URL, and a destination in the HANA Cloud platform. So the destination definition is in purple there, slash D slash Northwinds at the bottom. And that slash D slash Northwinds via the destination mapping in the app neoapp.json file is mapped to a destination. This is very complicated, but it actually, when you see it, it's actually quite simple. Um, mapped to a destination called Northwinds in our HANA Cloud platform. So there's the destination Northwinds that points, it's a type HTTP, and it points at uh, a base URL. And that, of course, then points to the Northwind service. So there's that diagram. Hold that diagram uh, in mind for a second, and let's just trace that through. And we'll do the same thing again for this next one and the next one after that. So we've got here a definition of our dynamic tile number one. And if we have a look at the navigation definition, we can see that's our service URL here. I've deliberately not put in a refresh interval to show that you, you can have nothing, so it doesn't refresh uh, at any, any frequency whatsoever. OK, and that points to our product dollar count, but it points to that 
through a mapping in the neoapp.json. So we've got the neoapp.json here in our destinations app. If I double click that, we can see slash d slash northwinds maps to a target, which is a destination type in HCP with the name Northwinds. And our destinations, of course, as you can see here, are defined here. Here's another destination that I'm going to show you shortly, but this is where we, we define our destinations. So all this is connected together with the result that, without any sort of cause headaches or uh, you know multi-destinations cross-origin policies, you can pull in information from on-premise SAP and non-SAP data sources, but also from external, non, uh, not on-premise, non-premise. Non-premise, I've just coined a new phrase, non-premise. OK. so. That's all well and good. So let's go back to our um, example. But what if you wanted a, something slightly more tricky? You can still use a power of O data to say, well, just show me the out of stock products. So you can imagine already uh, you know, a series of KPIs all related to the same source, to the same list of products, for example. But you might want to say, well, just show me the ones that are out of stock. So how do you do that? Actually, that's no magic. That's just using the power of O data again to say, well, actually, all I'm going to do is add a filter an OData query option to say, show me all those ones where the units in stock um, uh, property, the value is less than or equal to zero, and it's five. Amazing. So in fact, I, if I take off the dollar count there, you can see that it's just, woo, that's very big, woo, uh, it's just five. Okay, so that's where we're getting the five from. So with just the power of you know a single OData service, and if you've got any Fury apps installed right now, or even some uh, other OData services in, in your gateway installation, then you've already got you know, possibly a wealth of information that you can actually pull out and expose just like that in a, in a dynamic tile. Okay, So there's the two first examples of exposing information in a dynamic tile. Okay, but what happens if you want to say, oh, danger, Will Robinson, we've only got we've got five out of stock products. You want to make that number red, right? What are you laughing at? It's, I'd like to have danger. Well, not danger, Will Robinson, but anyway, I'd like to have that number in red. But you can't do that using this standard mechanism of using a single scalar value from a no data dollar count, for example. What you have to do is to embrace the slightly more powerful version of the dynamic tile which is to say, instead of surfacing a single scalar product, a uh, single scalar value, I'm going to surface a whole entity. So in OData terms, that's a single thing, a single entity with a number of different properties. And that entity is a well-defined entity with a number of properties that are well known. And I'm going to look along my uh, tabs here. Where are they? Uh, where are they? There, we, there, we, there we go. So I've got a sample OData service in our back-end on-premise SAP system. Um, and that OData service is called ZBFF sample underscore serve. And as you can see here, we've got a tiles entity set. And I'm specifically going for one particular entity. That's why I've got an entry rather than a feed here, OData wise. And that surfaces, let me just make that a little bit bigger, that surfaces a number of these well known um, properties title, subtitle, number, number unit, and so on. And with the values for these well-known properties, we can influence the complete tile. So if I go to my uh, slides, slide number two of four will show us how that works. It's almost the same as the first slide, but instead, we're actually going to an on-premise, and this is, of course, an internal URL, so don't even try and go there because it doesn't exist, an internal URL via the HANA Cloud connector, which does a reverse mapping to our um, on-premise ABAP stack system where our OData service uh, is uh, exposed. And we can pull that in. And we can see, for example, that when we take that, um, when, we, when we embrace that um, uh, entity type and use all the values for the properties in that entity type, we can see that we get the title, production deploys there. We get the subtitle, this month to date. We even get the chance to have a number state, don't forget we're talking semantic colors here rather than explicit colors. We've got the number state, which is positive, which means green or red, which is uh, error or negative, uh, with Danger Will Robinson, all that sort of stuff. And we can even influence the state arrow up, for example, this is more than last month's. Notice I'm doing agile, agile KPIs here. We've deployed 21 times to production because we are super agile, et cetera, right? So you can influence all the sort of stuff in a dynamic tile. So again, just with quite simple use of OData and this, this, this um, entity type definition, you can do really cool things, but you're restricted to numbers. So what happens if you want to do something a little bit more exciting? So let's go back to our uh, example. Woo, that's gone big as well. 
this is very exciting. So um, some of you watching may have seen uh, one of the blog posts or all of the blog posts that we mentioned at the start. Um, I do um, some running and I map my information in, well, Endomondo and also a Google spreadsheet with a ton of uh, things down here. But I've got my year to date, for example, how many kilometers I've run this year so far compared to how many kilometers I've run, for example, uh, by this time last year and so on. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this information from a Google spreadsheet through the sheet as JSON mechanism uh, in through the destinations. Uh, actually, no, this, this one is through cause anyway. We'll, we'll have a look in a second. Um, into a, 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 a tile. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word tile then. I've said tiles a million times over the past few weeks. And, and you can see this information surfaced here. So how do we get this on a tile? And just as equally, how do we get this on a tile? Let's look at the diagram first of all, and then we'll actually dive in to see how that works. Um, I, 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 I noticed uh, this week Matt Harding, uh, if you're there Matt, hi Matt. Awesome blog post, by the way. Uh, started looking at also how this was done. And uh, yes, you can build these and can have these custom tiles without HANA, without Smart Business. You know, it's just a little Fury app. Uh, sorry, a little UI5 app. One view, one controller, which we'll see right now. So if I flip over to my other tab here, the final diagram. Again, same sort of layout for the diagram. Got the tile on the right hand side. Okay, I'm showing this this bullet chart here, but the same thing goes for the other uh, micro chart on that tile there. So, where's this bullet chart coming from? It's coming from a tile definition in the Fury Launchpad, where that tile definition is of type custom. So we've got static type, we've got dynamic type, and we've got custom type. And in this case, what is this custom type tile? It's actually just quote unquote air quotes. Um, an XML view, okay? So I've defined it as a one by one tile. I've not defined, okay, I've defined the word title here for the property title, because I know that I'm not even gonna be using that. The title itself for the tile is gonna come from the XML view itself, okay? So we're building a tiny little UI5 app. And uh, as I say, it's XML, of course, why would you build your views in any anything other than XML, uh, unless you're crazy? Um, and the actual uh, path to the XML view is custom tile app, which is the name of the app that I've developed in the SAP Web IDE and deployed to the HANA Cloud platform. Dot view, because that's of course where you normally would keep your views in a folder called view. And the, 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 the file itself with the XML view in it is bullet chart tile dot view dot XML and so on. Notice there again, this Fury prefix, which enables the launch pad via the HANA Cloud platform to access that particular deployed um, app that you've built and pushed to the HANA Cloud platform. So what does that app look like? We'll, we've got a screenshot of the app folder structure here, but we'll look at the app in a second. Um, the app is a regular UI5 app with a component.js, which doesn't do very much. It just sits there and uh, allows me as a developer to sort of say, well, actually the, the root view is either this view or that view. I can test it in the web IDE awesome tool within the HANA Cloud platform and then just get the tile right before I deploying it to the HANA Cloud platform. As you can see here, I've got comparison micro chart tile and a corresponding controller and I've got bullet chart tile and a corresponding controller. So these two views correspond to the two views, uh, so to the two tiles that we saw in the custom part of our screen. Okay, so how does this work? The view itself defines what the tile looks like, what the content of the, of the tile is, right? So you've got the micro chart and you've got the title and so on, which we'll have a look at. But of course, we've got to have data as well. So instead of defining a pointer to the data in the tile definition itself, like we have with the products and the dollar count and so on in the dynamic tile, we're just using a normal model um, in our UI5 application to point to, and I've got one example of a no data model and one example of a JSON model. That's a no data model one here on the, uh, on the bullet chart and the Google spreadsheet one, I'm pulling that in via sheet as JSON. So I'm, obviously I'm using a JSON model. I'm defining that in the init event of each of the charts, each of the chart views controllers. Pretty simple stuff. I've deliberately done them as sort of separate self-contained view controller pairs because. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Oh, by the way, we're also going to the on-premise uh, sample service again through the HANA Cloud Connector. Nothing new there, it's quite straightforward. We'll have a quick look at how the JSON uh, data model points to the, to the Google spreadsheet data. 
but that's just through a little cause anywhere app that I'm running on Heroku, just for the hell of it. Okay, so um, let's have a let's go across to here. So those are those two tiles there. Now let's have a look at first of all de the definition. So there's our custom tile. Let's look at the bullet chart first. Custom number two. Okay, that's the screenshot that we just saw. The bullet chart tile, uh, and it's in the app called Custom Tile App. Let's have a look at this app. So if I tab across, I, these, um, these uh, tab names could do with uh, improving. But anyway, okay, here we go. So here's our custom tile app. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah, they might be a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. So we've got um, our definition. Let's go back again. Our definition is this bullet chart tile, which, uh, which is the view. So let's go to that view, bullet chart tile. Where are we? Okay. So as you can see, and this is very similar to... Um, what uh, Matt put in his blog post uh, uh, a short while ago as well. I'm actually using a generic tile from uh, the SAP M library, actually, which is quite cool. That's, just, that's moved. Um, and that generic tile through the tile content uh, contains a bullet microchart, which is in this new library called SAP Suite UI Microchart. Now, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the, the boring definition of how this works and everything, but you can see here that I, I'm binding this generic tile to a specific entity, OData entity, from the same service, from the same tiles entity set, and it's year to date 2016, which is, relates to basically a little table in our SAP ABAPSTAC backend, just for testing purposes, for demonstration purposes. Um, if you're wondering, and I'm sure there are people out there that are wondering, I'm pointing to the camera, but you can't see me, um, I'm staring sternly at the camera, uh, there's an example of where you might validly use uh, an expression binding in XML. I just want to make this number, make sure this number's a number and not a string that looks like a number. But anyway, that's a, that's a story for another time. So where does this bullet chart model get defined? Let's have a look at the corresponding controller. And we've got the controller here. And all I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, well, let's create an OData instance of an OData model and point it through our um, destination in the Neo app, which points to a destination in HCP, to the OData service. Job done. Very, very simple. OK, now let's have a, a look back at the other tile here. This is our distances year to date for the, from the running KPIs. Um, it's just another chart, right? It's just another chart. It's a bullet micro chart. Uh, sorry, not a bullet micro chart, a comparison micro chart. It's a chart anyway. Um, so here we go, comparison micro chart. If you've seen the previous one, this one should be fairly straightforward as well. There's nothing really that new. All I'm doing here again is I've got a generic tile. I've got within the tile content, I've got a comparison microchart, also from this SAP Suite UI microchart library. And I'm binding um, various properties from the tile content. There's a unit there, for example. I've got some hard-coded text, for example. But I'm also binding um, the, the data for the comparison microchart to the main which relates to the main tab of this Google spreadsheet. Because when you expose the Google spreadsheet as JSON, you get something that looks like that. Now, obviously, I'm going through this very, very fast. We may want to do an exciting sort of deeper dive into the deeper dive, a meta deep dive, <laughs> to, to sort of do a little bit more justice to this. But what I'm doing, effectively, is saying, well, I want to pull this data in and expose it through, for example, the, um, the, the aggregations here. So it's, it's all, the data is all there. And this time, rather than pulling information from an on-premise app, app stack for your own data, I'm pulling it from somewhere else. And it works equally beautifully. Um, by the way, again, because I couldn't influence the Google App Script mechanism to stick Cause Anywhere headers on, all I'm doing is I run my, little, my own little uh, Cause Anywhere, um, where is it, um, service on Heroku that sticks uh, headers on for me so that uh, I can consume it directly from here. Anyway, it's 12.45. Um, I've done enough talking. Um, and I think, hopefully, by now, we've gone 30,000 feet, 10,000 feet. We've had a look to see the sorts of things that we can do. But more importantly, maybe also, to give you an idea or to, to help you start thinking about, um, you know, have you got the data? What sort of data might you want and so on, right? So. We've got 45 minutes, uh, sorry, we've got 45 minutes left, 50 minutes left, 40 minutes left now. Um, let's have a quick talk now. We're going to do a round table because we feel like football pundits here or rugby pundits. 
um, if you want a proper sport. Uh, and <laughs> I'm, I'm really making enemies, aren't I? Anyway, I don't, I don't care. Um, about how to get started, right? So we, you know, we did have a bit of a discussion. You know, first of all, um, where where might one where might an organisation start? You know, building this sort of stuff. You know, look to, thinking in terms of the components involved and the things that you need. How how would you get started? I'd probably get started with either the Fiori Cloud Edition, or if you've already got an ABAP app front end server on that, because if you've already got Fiori apps, you've already got access to the the wonderful Fiori yeah. Launchpad, and yeah, you can just sort of have a play around with it, really. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Fiori Cloud Edition, and there's a, there's a the Cloud Edition is obviously uh, generally available since the end of March this year, but there's a trial version which is free, and you get the mm -hmm. Cloud Portal, which gives you the Fiori Launchpad as a site type. Mm -hmm. I know Leo gave a talk at UI5Con, UI5Con um, <laughs> last month about building stuff on the mm -hmm. Cloud portal and so on. But yeah, it, you, you don't need uh, any infrastructure. If you've got no front-end server, you, you don't need any nope. uh, infrastructure investment to do that, right? That, that's right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. And what yeah, about? I, th I think a lot of people actually have started kind of unintentionally doing this. Um, so if we go back to, to, to my example where we showed our launch pad of actually that's our productive system. Yeah. And, and we started playing around with the My Timesheet app because it's a lot more user friendly and you could do it on your mobile um, than the, mm -hmm. the traditional Java stuff that we were using previously. And then out of that, we started having ideas and conversations of actually, wouldn't it be useful to show how much holiday you have left? Yeah, I'd like to be able to see this at a glance type thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. You, as, as, a, as a business, already had that infrastructure in place to do the launch pad. Um, so it, it's no more work just to add that extra tile um, to it surface that KPI that is really useful. Yeah, and that, that would be just using, just pointing to an OData resource, probably with a dollar count, maybe with a filter or something like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, in, in terms of you know, what's the minimum required, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking aloud. Really, from a, from a technical point of view, I think you hopefully agree, you don't even need gateway. I mean, you know, I, th I think there are fewer and fewer uh, organizations now that don't have gateway, but even if you weren't to have gateway, you could still build a RESTful service that would expose some data, you know, an endpoint that you could point to from the Fury Cloud Trial Edition to, you know, to get going now, right? Is that, that's, that's right, right? Yeah, um, and even um, perhaps through an RFC call. RFC, oh, no. <laughs> okay. So I, I wasn't ready for it. So we had this joke, right? For those for those folks who watch QI, we had a we had an amazing joke. So when when Ollie said RFC, I'm going to do it anyway. When Ollie said RFC, I was going to go, <laughs> but that just doesn't work at all, does it? But I'm going to do it anyway. You've made it easy. For, for for those QI fans out there, there we go. RFC. Thank you, Ollie, for completely. Uh, Sorry, making it look like even more of an idiot than usual. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you could e you could even if you wanted to, if you were crazy enough, you could even use an RFC, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in in terms of in terms of sort of from 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 the, the business perspective, what are the things that, that organisations need to need to think about in terms of how to go forward from an organisational and maybe a, maybe a, a you know a, a key stakeholder perspective. How would, you, how, would you, how would you sort of start there? I, I would start having sort of conversations with anyone who has ever suggested that they need a certain KPI or a dashboard. Because if you've, if you're going to the effort to make sort of a fairly complicated bit of work to show maybe to perhaps just a few KPIs, this is kind of the perfect opportunity to, to simplify that process really. Because you've seen it couldn't be easier yeah. to add in a, a well, sim simple metrics. I think more complicated means a little bit more out of scope, yeah. but yes. yes. The simple stuff it couldn't be couldn't be simple, and you can access it on mobile. And it's, yeah, exactly. And especially if you've already if you already started to implement Fiori, you've got everything you need anyway. And it's just to, uh, like Ollie showed as well. You know, allow the users to go and say, "Oh, there's actually some useful KPI here that I can have for free, and I can arrange it exactly where I want on my my uh, launch pad. And all of a sudden, my you know my life is slightly enhanced by you know with, with no extra effort." And it's just there for me to, to sort of to take from, mm -hmm. and these you know with with the with the 
the custom tiles that we saw Tiago develop for us that, that, um, that, we, that we saw with the black theme and everything, you know, you could have really complex stuff, mm -hmm. but you could also go, you know, mix, that, mix and match that with really simple stuff. I mean, all right, I, I, I think there'll be people out there as well that are saying, well, what, what are the alternatives? Why, why use, uh, beyond the, well, you've got it there, it's there, there's no extra effort, what alternatives are there for sort of dashboard, human-centric dashboard style uh, setups? I mean, what else would, would, would an SAP organization or SAP customer use? I guess you'd have to use either a custom UI 5 application and go, go the full hog, or you've got sort of more business objects report type yeah. things. Yeah. So you've got yeah, I think we're talking about um, actually having the, the intention of going and looking at reporting. Or I think there's a nice niche here yeah. in, in saying, actually, this is the place where I can do my, my actions. And actually, with the latest versions, you can embed traditional um, SAP backend transactions within, within the launch pad. So I can do all of my regular work, as it were, yeah. uh, from one place. But I also have view on the overall KPIs that actually govern that, that process. So I'm going to reuse the holidays and the timesheet example. But yeah. that's, a, yeah. that's, a, that's a natural. Uh, that's playing on your mind, isn't it, Ollie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> rightly so. Rightly so. <laughs> Actually, what I thought you were going to say was um, you can action via by clicking the tile because yeah. what we didn't show because you know there's so much stuff to show uh, with the custom tiles that you get all the regular event mechanisms that you do if it was just being exposed as a normal UI five app. So you can click on the tile itself, you can click on parts of the tile and have events respond, and you can you can have a handler for those events. So you can do all sorts of things. You, you know, one, one for one of our customers, we built a tile that. Didn't do any well. It, it, you clicked it, and it went into a certain one state. And you clicked it again, went to another state. Clicked it again, went to another state. So you can have actually tiles that are themselves mini applications that you know you don't need to descend into the next level to to do stuff. So it's the, you know there's a combination there as well to be had. Okay. I think that's something you, you lose if you go into into a more reporting mode. Yeah. Is you lose the ability to do an action on those yeah. on those KPIs. Yeah. And I, I do like the nice combination of. You've got numbers that mean more to some people than others. You've got charts that mean uh, more to some people than others, and so on. So there's, you know, there's, there's, there's something, for, something, something for everyone. <laughs> Children, yeah. yeah, something for everyone. <laughs> but I think because you can customize it to that extent as well, with, with maybe a more traditional report, you'd have to kind of come up with a one solution that fits everyone, yeah. whereas here you can, and every, people everyone can have everything. I'll have that bit, but I don't want that bit, and I'll have that mm. bit, and I'll have that bit, and so on. Yeah. yeah. OK, so we've got. Oh, we've got a question. I was going to say, we've got five minutes left, and I'm hoping there are some questions. And in fact, some, somebody's whispered in my ear, DJ, we have a question. <laughs> so what is the question? Oh, right, I've got to open my email. I don't have my email open normally, so I'll just open it. Outlook takes ages. <laughs> OK. Am I on the interwebs? Yes. Oh. Right. That's in very large font. There we go. So, thank you. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> are you shouting this, e this question at me? Okay, so the, I'll read out the question. So, listen carefully. When users have hundreds of tiles, hundreds of tiles, I can't imagine them being that easy to navigate between, even with tile groups. Well, at least not as intuitively as menus, especially NetWeaver business clients, horizontal menus. Are search and tile groups the only way to navigate between tiles? Uh, so no, you can uh, obviously you can search by tile name with a little, with a little search bar at the top, or and tile groups as we've already mentioned. But you can also filter them as well, so you can kind of drill down a bit. And as you can see on uh, on the screen that's on at the moment, actually in the background, yes. is uh, you can also subgroup them into uh, sort of my home. I, I would waft my arms around, but I can't, can't quite reach. <laughs> um, yeah, as you can see, so Ollie's grouped his tiles into my home and my uh, my bluefin. So you can there is a lot of ways you can categorize them down. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that, that does remind me of uh, something that Ollie and John and I were talking about just before we went on air. Just before we went on air was the fact that actually for some KPIs, you might want the ability to modify the way they're displayed, you know, change currency, for example. Is that, that's something that you've, you've been working on? Yeah, as um, a, it's, a, it's a relatively new uh, um, enhancement to allow you to add additional, um, not tiles, but additional features and functionality. And I think the idea is, um, is that in standard, you can actually have a, 
a support mechanism to raise a, raise a ticket um, through this menu at the top here. But you can also add additional uh, custom buttons. And I thought it, actually, if we're using this as a as a KPI a, a dashboard, mm -hmm. then perhaps we would want to change uh, either the reporting currency for all, all of my tiles, oh, or the year to date, or the, the, yeah. some sort of uh, company code or something like that, to, to allow me to to better focus on 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 the information that I see. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, so I think some people, um, we, and we also talked about this before. Some people, I think, also in the audience might be thinking. Okay, well, what about the overview page? And how does this relate to the overview page? Which is quite a new, uh, new concept uh, from, from, the, from the stable of the, of the smart templates and the smart applications and so on. So, um, uh, in my opinion, the overview page is a very fit for purpose um, endeavor, but effectively, it's an application. You know, it's, it's it's at the next level down. You might want to have an overview page for a particular uh, particular activity, but the Fury Launchpad mix is, in in my opinion, better than the overview page because it exposes everything plus the KPIs, and it and also it's, it's simpler. We've got another question actually. Um, question two in my inbox. Um, what are the main oh what are the main differences between fury 1.0 and 2.0 which would you recommend to start with who wants to go with that one uh might as well start because i'm sure you two will be able to <laughs> go down and go into more detail than i will but um i'd i'd personally start with fury 2.0 if that's available to if you if that's available if that's available because you do need to be on obviously certain patch levels and all that good stuff is it actually available yet anyway oh uh fury content server Two is available. Con Actually, this is what we're running. We're running at the moment. It's the 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 latest. So, a while back, it's been the decision to, to keep a kind of a stable release. So, one twenty eight dot x, um, which is what a lot of these demos are are built on on here. Um, but then also continue innovating on a, on a on a new in innovation um, type stream, and that we can. We can bring in new f new features and functionality. Um, so this is the in the in the two dot zero. Yes. Um, uh, it's up to you, and it's dependent on on what applications you want. So some uh, dependency mapping you need to you need to go through. But uh, after that, I'd always recommend the latest latest version. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly more future proof. I think. Cool. Okay. Last question before we have to wrap up. Um, can we control visibility of the dynamic Fury tiles based on certain conditions? For example, if there are, if there are any actions required, then show it up. Ooh, that's a good one. A good um, one. Hmm, the tile definition itself is visible by, by, the, uh, by the coming together of configuration at the tile level. Um, so I think, well, I'm gonna guess the answer is, at a high level, the answer is no, but m what you might wanna do is have different content on that tile According to those conditions, so you could say, for example, you know, no action required, mm. or you could visu you know, visually represent no action required. Yes. But if there were act was action required, then you could have some dynamic content on there, uh, a dynamic number, or oh, actually, no, well, whatever you want, really, a tile, yeah. a, a chart, or a number, or whatever. Yeah. I don't. Um, yeah, I don't think you'd be able to hide the tile. Full not together. on the not, not at that level of condition. No. Yeah, I think. I think, yeah, if you're, you're a user and you're expecting to see three tiles when you log in, not having one there might be a bit a point. A yeah. bit disconcerting. I think that the, probably the standard way of doing it is to change, to subdue the colors, is to, is to make it a, a more neutral tile. So Subdue the colors. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Subdue the colors. <laughs> I am so going to use that phrase. <laughs> okay, no, that's good. Okay, well, um, we're at one o'clock. So it uh, just goes to, uh, for me to say thank you very much for joining our super exciting and slightly scary TV studio <laughs> webinar. And thanks to my awesome uh, colleagues and friends, John and Ollie, and uh, we'll see you next time.